This conference will now be this conference will now be recorded. Yeah, good morning to all the participants. Thank you for joining the online faculty development program on current research trends in, in electronics and communication engineering. As a coordinator, it is my pleasant duty to introduce the meeting myself and the speaker of the day. Myself is Dr. V. Ramesh Kumar. I am working as an associate professor in RGM CET since four years. RGM College of Engineering uh, was established in the year 1995. The institute is one of the top engineering colleges of Andhra Pradesh and got the permanent affiliation from JNT Anandpur. The institute has created by NAC with A plus grade. The institute gets registered with an average of 90% placements along all eligible students. On the continuous basis, we are hardly working towards the excellence in quality education and research. It is very important to appreciate the management of RGM CET for giving the privilege to have a great learning platform to the faculties through webinars, FTPs, even in these difficult situations. Now it is time to introduce one of the dynamic and versatile personality and today's speaker, Dr. Pankaj Kumar Pal. He received the MTech degree from National Institute of Technology, Hamirpur, in 2010. During this period, he received the gold medal for his academic credentials. He received the PhD degree from Indian Institute of Technology, IIT Roorkee, in 2016. He is currently working as an assistant professor in NID Uttarakhand. His area of current research are dimensionless transistors, infrared circuit core design, XRAM design, etc. He published 22 research papers in journals and conferences. Especially, he published five papers in IEEE transactions on electron devices. Shortly, we named it as a PED. He is a storehouse of knowledge and uh, he is a uh, like to present his uh, share his expertise in infrared devices. I request you all, if any queries, please do not interrupt the presentation. You can raise the, your comments in the chat box. So at the end of the session, we will raise your comments and we will uh, let you know the proper answer from the speaker. Once again, I heartily welcome you all to this program. Now I am handing the session to Dr. Pankaj. Yeah, Pankaj sir. You can share the slides and you can start the session. I'm handing the session to you. Anka sir, is there any problem? Sir, ah, now, sir, Anka sir, can you now can talk? Okay. Thank you, Ramesh sir, for your kind words and introducing my to me. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the principal sir, chairman sir, and all the faculty members of the. Uh, electronics and communication engineering uh, now i'd like to present uh, the today's topic uh, that is given to me the principal devices and the technology so these are the short list of the topic that we are going to cover today the motivation towards the ic what is the motivation and what is the workforce behind this the obviously the most law and the scaling what are the different types of challenges so that motivated us to shifted to the multi-gate devices like the double gate MOSFET infrared device the today's topic and uh, now as you all know that the, the, this is the transistor revolution uh, we have heard too, so many times that the transistor was first developed in 1947 in Bell Labs by the Bardeen, Shockley and uh, Britain and uh, thereafter the this, this one is the first bipolar transistor 
in 1945-49, and then we uh, go to the TTL ECL on this pitch. But before that, uh, uh, the, the first uh, we are not talking about the uh, basic BG, uh, MOSFETs, but uh, the MOSFETs is uh, the concept of the MOSFET is first defined in 1925 by the Lenin Field. Who is initially a Canadian? Later on, uh, during the World War, he joined uh, in America and uh, published his paper from the America side. And he said that the, uh, the, the, the transistor could be uh, uh, ty a type of uh, three layers in which uh, there is a metal layer, there is an insulator layer, and a, a semiconductor layer is there in which uh, it will work as a field effect transistor so due to the field effect transistor. But uh, at that time, uh, as you all know that uh, if we are going to start a new device, if you're going to propose a new device, what will be happen? Uh, we will choose, uh, we will pick the best things that uh, the metal at the time we are using the aluminum insulator and a pure insulator is there and uh, the silicon semiconductor, the silicon and germanium semiconductor. But what will happen at the time? Uh, because of the, uh, by taking the pure insulator, what will happen? They, they in pure semiconductor, there is a property that it will not bind with the semiconductor on the metal. That's why that the concept is ready in 1925, but actually the MOS is defined in 1950s. And therefore, the, uh, the first MOSFET uh, is defined in 1952, 1952, uh, sorry, 1956, and later on we came up with the complementary MOSFET uh, defined uh, device that is 1960s. Thereafter, and then, uh, as you know, that uh, in basic, uh, you have uh, already heard in basic uh, microprocessor course that uh, the PMOS is defined in 1960s, uh, thereafter, in the 70s, uh, and MOS is there in uh, 4004, 8080, And thereafter, the, uh, the we will, uh, as of now, we will prefer only the MOSFET kind of thing. But, uh, there are, in, during this 50 years of tenure, there are so many challenges that the MOSFET has to face. And uh, that is why now we came up with the solution of the FinFET device. Not only the FinFET device, like the MOSFET, all of the uh, spintronics, uh, what, uh, uh, what you have already you have planned in this uh, five-day FDP. There are so many things that we have covered. MOSFET, FinFET is a, a single, a single, a single one type of solution that we will to offer. So the thing started from the in 1971 when the Intel uh, Intel proposes first uh, microprocessor that is 4004. As you already heard about that, it's a four-bit microprocessor. But the, our intention to study this is that it has only 2300 of transistors and that works in a one megahertz clock. But nowadays, as uh, as we uh, working on uh, uh, what what we are working in i4, i i uh, i3, i5, i7 processor, we are, we are dealing with billions of transistors. So this is why and and the the point of uh, attraction is that uh, that the size is always remains same. And uh, in seventy one we have dealing with twenty three hundred. Now we are uh, replicating the same. Similar size, then we are fabricating billions of transistors. What is the workforce behind this? This is because of the current mm -hmm. mode prediction. Why I am saying this are the current mode prediction? Because it's an earlier than business prediction, later on it becomes Moore's law. That is the basic workforce. In 1965, the current mode published its famous paper that's stemming more component onto the IC. And in that paper, he predicted that the number of transistors on a chip could be doubled in every 18 months. Uh, why I'm saying this as way it is written that 18 to 24 months, because uh, as the time changes, this, this uh, term is also revised. Uh, earlier, they said that uh, the transistor would be, uh, transistor number of transistors would be doubled in 24 months. They, uh, later on, the technology is developed too much that we can uh, define number uh, double the transistor in 18 months also therefore it is not uh, mentioned anywhere that uh, which one is the correct is it, is it 18 months or the 24 months that's why we have seen that the 18 for 18 months to the 24 months although it's a business prediction as you know that the Gordon Moose is a co-founder of Intel and therefore 
uh, he it gives uh, he started a new company uh, then uh, because of this company he can all the background research so from 1960s to 1965 he did uh, the five year research product project and then uh, he said that uh, the number of transistor would be double that will really reduce the cost and uh, obviously the speed will be double but uh, as per the gordon moore prediction as per the uh, his law he didn't uh, speak about the energy part he didn't talk about the the power part so the later on this prediction becomes a most law and is remarkably followed by the semiconductor industries actually what happened in that time the 1960s you know, 60s the semiconductor industries major from the us side and they teamed up and formed a uh, formed a team that and they call it as an ntrs uh, that is national technology road map for semiconductor so most of the big giant companies of semiconductor they defined this as ntrs every year they issued a update or a prediction so that it gave it a form as a benchmark for the other companies also later on this will become as the international technology road map for semiconductor when uh, other companies from taiwan japan and so many companies they will be teamed up in that thing so that's why we call it as an international technology road map for semiconductor so later on this prediction becomes a most law and then the golden garden moves will become a great golden moves this is followed by the semiconductor industry from 1950s to till date hello pankaj pankaj yes sir yes pankaj so so have you using any earphone something like that or it is just a laptop mic no no i am using my earphone earphone so yes, could, could you un- unplug it and uh, re- uh, replace it we are having some noise in your voice actually <laughs> you can test you can test now can you speak now hello ankit you can speak now or yeah you can uh, you can use the mic of a laptop am i audible now you on mute you on uh, now you check uh, is it audible now yeah it is good fine okay okay thank you sir so shall i continue yeah please continue okay so this is the golden mode that we have already discussed about that that uh, the golden mode is basically predicted uh, uh, the things about the number of transistor that will reduce the cost to the half and uh, it also discuss about the speed that the speed of the transistor would be double but he didn't talk about any anything talk about uh, the power and energy component which is too much important for nowadays and so later on this prediction will become known as the moore's law and has been remarkably followed by the semiconductor industries for the last uh, 50 to 60 years and this is the basic workforce uh, that motivated uh, so uh, semiconductor industries to follow these rules and therefore they uh, this prediction will become uh, the most law and followed by the uh, semiconductor industry and uh, this is the actual uh, the graph uh, uh, it presented in his uh, magazine 
uh, that have a data from 1959 to 1965 and later on this data will be extrapolated and you have seen that the, it's, it's completely defined on the number of transistors and that is actually the, from the business point of view to reduce the cost only and what what is the basic uh, uh, terminology that we have to use uh, because the size will the size of an ic will become same and uh, the number of transistors would be doubled every year then how we can do that and that is only possible because uh, to, that is only possible because of the technology uh, so the fabrication technology and therefore we have to uh, improve our uh, fabrication technology that is lithography and all these things so the but the, again the issue is that in uh, 1965 as you have uh, might of you have heard that uh, in the first IC uh, that is designed by the Kilby, in only only four transistors are there. But uh, later on in 1971-2300 transistor, now we are talking about the billions of transistors in IC. So how we can do that? Because uh, as a team, up as a team of all the semi uh, the industry, we have to think about. We have to give a roadmap. Uh, I have already talked about the ITRS and the interested technology roadmap for semiconductor, what, the, what the, their role is. Uh, they have to define the roadmap for each and every company, each and every industry that uh, from this point of 1971, we are working on that much of uh, length or micro technology node. And uh, from next two years, we are working on that node. So it is already defined. So because of this, uh, uh, to, to remove that uh, mismatch about that, we are uh, following the scaling rules from uh, so from 1960s to 1974 we are just doing the scaling because uh, as the most law suggested that the speed you have to increase how you can speed, how you can increase the speed because you have to uh, what is the actual role of the mosfet actually there is a source tunnel there is a drain tunnel what will happen the source tunnel the source tunnel is that what will have to uh, the, there is a three it's a MOSFET is a generally we call it as a three terminal device. The two terminal uh, role is defined, and the source is to provide the charge carriers. The train has to uh, address the charge uh, carriers and the role of gate and all other terminals that we can include, like the four terminal device, five terminal device. The all other two uh, two terminals, the role of two terminals are specified, and rest all other uh, terminals we can use for the controlling purpose. So ethically, from 1965, how we can raise the speed? If we can close down the source and drain, or you can say the distance between source and drain, which we can reduce it. Then the then the speed we can we are saying that the speed will increase. But what will happen? It is not a pos It is not possible. If that we you are continuously reducing the size of uh, uh, reducing uh, urgently the size of source and drain. What will happen? Will it is of no, no, no use? And uh, the, your technology is not that much evolved that uh, how you can get uh, the 50% uh, reduction in the overall area. So because of that in 1975, in 1974, Denard had proposed a constant field scaling method in which the electric field remains the same as the feature scales. And what assumption they have made that uh, he is told that the, you have to reduce all the dimensions, not only the horizontal dimension, you have to reduce the vertical all all from all side you, know, you have to reduce uh, length also width uh, t of side everything and apart from that to keep the uh, electric field constant uh, you have to reduce the voltage also with the same uh, parameter and uh, the, because of that uh, you have to increase the doping level why why they wanted to reduce the uh, uh, voltage levels to or, or we, why we wanted to keep the electric field constant because we want that whatever be the characteristics in uh, the, whatever be the characteristics in large long scale uh, long channel devices the same characteristics we can get in the short channel devices also that is why this is the main motto whenever we get the same similar type of characteristics we have go for the constant field scaling method but what will happen as you have uh, seen in that uh, the on current is reduced ion is reduced our switching power density is reduced, the delay is reduced. What um, So ethically, the, the, the constant field scaling method doesn't predict it that much. Uh, so there is another technology, there is other scaling methods also proposed that we call it as an 
constant voltage uh, scaling method in which the voltage will become constant. And uh, if the voltage we will keep the same uh, voltage, then what will happen? The electric field will be become high. So the we will get the speed benefit. But the again, if we will get the speed benefit, we will get it. Uh, we will uh, uh, early reaches to the critical electric field, and then the velocity mm -hmm. will become saturated and the characteristics of the long channel device and the short channel device will become now uh, distorted or you can say it will change but uh, we are not actually following the constant field scaling method as well as the constant voltage scaling method we are generally following the uh, combination of both these two because it is not possible to reduce the uh, uh, t-ox or you can say the SiO2 layer thickness because in 1965 uh, nanometer SiO2 thickness is around 1.2 nanometer. It's about four, four to five atomic uh, layer thick. Then how you can reduce it? Also, if you are if if anyhow you can reduce it, then the problem is that uh, it will again increases to the gate tunneling or uh, you can say the if the charge is coming from source side, then. Uh, and we are uh, vertical electric field is increasing that much then what will happen it will never reach to the drain side it will go in upward direction to the gate and uh, which is uh, which is against the concept of the mosfet in, uh, in mosfet we are saying that the input impedance is actually infinite or you can say very high but what will happen if the charge coming from the source side and it will go to the drain then the input, there is a current and there is a gate current and what will happen the input impedance will become low or you can say the efficiency will become less. So uh, this is uh, one physical limit. The other limit is that uh, in uh, in VDD scaling, uh, the supply voltage we can we are not reducing the supply voltage as per the uh, as per the suggested method. And uh, because uh, in 1971 and 1976, we have already heard that the macro is 8085. That is a very popular MOSFET. Oh, sorry, very popular uh, microprocessor. Uh, it worked on a uh, five volt uh, supply, but uh, nowadays, what uh, uh, what uh, uh, microprocessor and what uh, ICs we have, it work on a one point eight volt supply, one point three volt supply. We are not going beyond that. So, actually, uh, the voltage uh, is not scaled in that way as the device dimension we have to we have we are we were scaled. And the issue is that uh, five volt supply is now reduced to, and reduced to the three volt, three point three volt supply. And then they will later on one point eight, and now we are working on one point three volt supply. So it is not possible uh, to uh, reduce the supply voltage. That, that is why we are using uh, a method that is in between the constant field scaling and the constant voltage scaling. And what are the scaling implications as we have already developed we are did all these things uh, we have did all this uh, work to reach the uh, uh, the prediction uh, predict uh, the way predicted by the Moore's law and that will give us the improved performance performance means the power will be reduced although it is not defined by the Moore's law that uh, he is talking only about the speed so that is why the speed is there and the improved cost interconnect woes are also there power woes are also there. these two are the main challenges because uh, as you are uh, scaling down the uh, scaling down the device dimension what will happen you have yeah. earlier you are uh, interconnecting 2300 devices now you have to interconnect billions of devices and what will you do obviously your internet will be more and uh, because of this more internet the uh, the performance uh, parameter is now not up to the de device. It is now shifted towards the interconnect side. So uh, thereafter also, uh, the power boost is also there because number of transistors are defined, number of transistors are increasing that much. So I square R, then the, the power loss is heat is there. And now the uh, there are tech physical limits that we all already discussed about the SIO2 silicon thickness layer. So the, because of these physical limits, there is an, a lot of issue that we call it as an scaling challenges, like uh, dynamic power, threshold leakage, gate tunneling is there, and combinedly we call it as a short chain effect. In 90s, we call it as a short chain effect. Later on, we, uh, because the, uh, ethically we are reducing the channel, we are reducing the length of the MOSFET. But nowadays, what will happen? 
uh, as the in Denard scaling uh, suggested that uh, you have to reduce the length as well as the width. So the whatever be the secondary effect arises uh, because of the reduction in length, we call it as a short chain effect, and whatever be the reduction in width. What the secondary effects uh, due to the reduction in width we call it as a narrow effect. So there are now there are so many effects are there. This is already already you know that so this is the situation. What will happen in that? I think you have already studied in this in uh, basic uh, courses of uh, digital VLSI. Earlier, this is a long characteristics IDVD characteristics of a long channel devices. What will happen? There is a relative region. And uh, the drive region, and thereafter, after a pinch of point, it will the current will become saturated. What what will happen? And this uh, there is a quadratic relationship. And what what happen in some micron region devices, or you can say the devices that have a length that is uh, below 100 nanometer. So what will happen? You can compare that uh, your saturation is your the, the linear region is shifted towards the Lower we decided that we call it as an early saturation, and, and later on the, the current is actually not saturated. It will slightly increase in a linear fashion. And why this is this will happen? This is because of the uh, velocity saturation effect, and that that I have already discussed. That in uh, if you are not uh, reducing the uh, supply voltage in a similar manner as suggested by the Denard scaling. Then what will happen? Your electric field will become more, and it will reach to the critical electric field. And after reaching the critical electric field, your the velocity will become saturated. Similar to that, it is defined in this uh, this part that the velocity there is a velocity saturation. If you are in continuously increasing the electric field, what will happen? And uh, before reaching it to the critical electric field, your velocity drift velocity will increase. And what what will happen if we are uh, reaching a critical electric field? The velocity will now become same. And it is this is because of the mobility degradation. So this is the basic uh, difference in between long channel device and short channel device. And uh, the sorry, <coughs> is a long channel device and short channel device. In long channel device, the pinch off point occurs at VGS minus VT. That is the overdrive voltage. And thereafter. The current will become saturated, but what will happen in the short channel device? It will uh, saturate quite early, or actually not saturated. It's quite a different linear region is there because of the velocity saturation part. So there is a difference in between long channel device and the short channel device, and that is why uh, when you are doing your simulation in, uh, or you have heard about the level one model, level two, and level three model. These are the basic simple models. But now currently we are working on level seventy-two model. That is only because of the there are so many secondary effects that we have to combine in, that we have to combine in the basic current equation. So this is all because of the short chain effect. What actually a short chain effect is? There is a lot of definition that defined uh, of the short chain effect. But are uh, actually what the short chain effect is? Whatever be the deterioration in your uh, characteristics, that we call it as a short chain effect. Whatever be the secondary effect we have observed, that uh, I do not consider this as a short chain effect is an is an uh, like a evil. Uh, we cannot uh, define this or some short chain effect which is uh, is beneficial for us. Like uh, if you are saying that uh, like a similar thing. Uh, I'm giving uh, an example that uh, if we are reducing the length, what will happen because of the short chain effect? The threshold will reduce. If the threshold will reduce, what will happen? Mm -hmm. The current, the drive current will increase. Obviously, it's a good thing for us. But the problem is that we don't want because along with the on current, drive current, the leakage current is also increased. So we are not dealing with that. But so that's why we call it as an any secondary effect that deviates the that deteriorates the characteristics. Of a basic short channel device, we call it as a short channel effect, and this is all because of the reduction in uh, the reduction in the source and uh, in the channel length of the source and drain. So this is the basic thing. Uh, this is the basic uh, long, uh, uh, IDVD curve of a long channel device and the short channel device. This is for the short channel device and the long channel device IDVD curve. 
and we see that the in long channel device the idv curve is a quadratic in nature while in case of short channel device it's a linear in nature so all this to sum up all these things the short channel and narrow wave effect there are lots of effects are there like for the saturation or with part as in mobility relation gate tunneling current is also there sub threshold conduction is there dibl threshold variation there are so many and uh, there is not a limit uh, there are so many second effects because of that the third test is actually the wave uh, actually i am not discussing all these things here because i have to focus only on the third part i'll share the slides with you and you can go through with that in case you have any issue with that you can come to me anytime uh, so basically uh, these are the these are the basic main issues that is the discussion device so what are the proposed solution for that there is a solution of the multi gate device and other as a, like uh, we have already discussed about sio2 scaling or you can say the physical limit that we have seen earlier so the intel has already proposed a solution like you can use the metal gate and high gate dielectric materials the for quantum effects there is a no solution for that quantum effects we can see can be find in a linear manner what the quantum effects is like if i have to go outside in my office room so i will generally prefer to go to open the door and then go outside but uh, as for the quantum effect what will happen i'll get power from uh, some from the outer source and i'll uh, put my head on the wall and then break it and then go outside this is quantum effect is like that you cannot predict the individual uh, electron manner or in a, what a, a how you how a single hour not not single actually with the how uh, less number of electrons will behave so that's why we can call it as a quantum effect like tunneling tunneling is also a quantum effect quantum phenomena ethically we say that any any charge will have to cross the barrier then only it will pass but what will happen if the barrier is too much high it with the the electron doesn't get any any energy to cross that barrier so what will happen they will cross that they will tunnel that barrier and then go to the other side so in a layman when what 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 we can not predict uh, from the classical physics we can call it as a quantum 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 and there is a no solution you have to deal with the quantum effect. Uh, like the polar depletion effect is also there might because of the metal weight and then we can use it uh, metal gate also so as an alternative uh, the conventional mosfet because of the so many challenges that we have faced in in 2000 uh, centuries that uh, uh, so therefore the idea is to put basic two strategies the first strategy strategy is to implement new material as a performance booster like uh, you have to use a mosfet uh, but uh, you can use some performance booster so that your scalability it would increase or uh, you can further scale down the device as well as you can improve the performance as per the most law suggested so uh, in that cases you can use a gate engineering method channel engineering method short engineering method like uh, high gate dielectric and metal gate this is a performance boost kind of thing mosfet will remain mosfet but uh, whatever be the you, you are uh, facing challenges because of the sio2 so instead of using sio2 why don't you use high gate dielectric like hf02 and other al2 or 3 there are so many high gate dielectric so because of using that high permittivity dielectric what what you can do is your thickness will remain will become it will become more uh, while the capacitance will become same so now if you have a more thickness then you can again uh, scale it scale down it but what will happen again every challenge every uh, advantage come with the some some different challenge but what will happen in that the high gate dielectric there are challenges in fringe induced there are low range and uh, also uh, the trap charges because uh, why we are using sio2 in 1925 uh, as i discussed earlier that lenin field has proposed a metal insulator semiconductor but they are not able to fabricate it and in 1960s we have fabricated the mosfet why because in insulator we are not using a perfect insulator we use only sio2 instead of insulator as you all know that sio2 is not a good in dielectric medium it's in dielectric but it is not a perfect insulator its permittivity is is 9.3.97 and uh, the issue is that but uh, 
the its binding power or you can say the its binding sio2 with the silicon the interface is quite good it has a lower scrap charges that's why we have used sio2 but the issue is that if we are using the high permittivity uh, high permittivity materials uh, like hfo2 what will happen it's for me it's it is not uh, it, it, it don't don't have a good uh, interfacing property with the silicon so that's why even we have a solution of that we are using some part of the hfo2 along with that stack uh, some part of sio2 and then uh, put a silicon layer <coughs> so again in channel engineering you have heard about the strain silicon channel so strain in high mobility channel lower activity stress stress are so engineering you can use the same structure but instead of in you have a um, you have you heard that uh, the biggest advantage of mosfet is that it stores and drain and interchangeable but uh, you now you can use uh, some now you can uh, do something more Hello, Pankaj. Maybe Dr. Pankaj is having some issue. Let us wait. He will reconnect now. So Chandrasekhar sir, you you please unmute Dr. Pankaj. So your slides are visible actually, but uh, the voice is uh, we are not getting your voice. Can you uh, switch on the camera? Ah, so your video is visible. So you you are moved to actually. Chandrasekhar sir, are you there? Sir, I am doing sir. So you please unmute Dr. Pankaj.
getting a ringing tone so these are the alternative to the conventional mosfet devices that uh, the it has proposed the first strategy is to implement new material as a performance booster and the second strategy is to develop a new structure with a better electrostatic control uh, in first strategy is the high catalytic metal and the metal grid are using uh, whatever we are uh, So high gate electric uh, and metal gate uh, we carry as well. Uh, I request all to kindly sir. mute your uh, mics. Understand, sir. Please mute uh, Lakshmi. Ananta Lakshmi. Hello. I'll request everyone to kindly mute your. Uh, Uh, mic yes sir now it is fine okay okay thank you sir so the first strategy is to implement new metal as a performance booster like uh, you can use a high gate electric to and instead of using uh, sio2 you can use hf2 uh, as a dielectric and uh, uh, to remove the polysilicon you can also use a metal gate so the uh, purpose of uh, using the performance booster is just to you have to use only the mosfet what will happen and uh, the issue is that you you can use only the any performance booster like uh, you can introduce stress uh, in the channel to increase the mobility uh, to remove to reduce the gate dielectric uh, to do the gate tunneling you can use high gate dielectric 
uh, you can also do some innovative things in social engineering part as well like uh, uh, in the biggest advantage of mosfet is that you can the source and drains are similar but uh, now you can uh, change the source and drain as well like in tunnel fed devices the source is of uh, p type or n type and the opposite type is of uh, drain side doping is there and in junction led devices the channel source and drain are of same type so you can do all these changes while the structure will remain same because that why we, we don't want to change the MOS character, MOS uh, structure because everything, the layout area, the uh, the technology, uh, we everything is supported by the MOSFET and we, we don't want to lose that thing. So, and the uh, other strategy is to change, the, to develop a new device structure with a better electrostatic control, although it was basic, uh, basic principle on the MOS devices, like in double gate MOSFET. Instead of using a single gate, now we are using a double gate. There is a, also a multi-gate transistor is also there, like three gate, quadruple gate all around. Uh, silica, similarly, the FinFET device, silicon nanowire, there are so many uh, wide range of devices. And uh, apart from all this, uh, there is a, and also a non-silicon based devices also they are like carbon tubes, prefin devices, spin devices, plasmonics, uh, so many devices. But now our intention is to only to study the double gate and the infrared devices. So we, now, now we switch to the double gate devices. What actually a double gate device is? What will happen? Uh, we have seen that in 32 nanometer devices, fine. But last uh, and 10 nanometer, it was proposed earlier. Proposed that uh, we uh, we have to switch to the non-silicon based device like CNT fets and all this. Although up to 7 nanometer now we are working on the FinFET devices, but uh, these slides are uh, quite old. So, uh, so there is a large gap in between what we can use in between 32 nanometer device to 10 nanometer or 7 nanometer device. So in even in 1984, the, this gap, this thought was processed earlier so they said that uh, the is main issue is that uh, why the short channel devices why the short channel effect is there because of the less electrostatic control like uh, i uh, like i have a, a large uh, a th a thickness of, of foam is there uh, or the you can say mattress is there what will happen if i'm putting water from the one side then what will happen uh, the water will reach to the other other side and how i can stop the water how i can uh, uh, reduce uh, how can uh, uh, reduce it and then i'll I'll, I'll put the burden on both sides like in double grade devices i'll press it from the top side and also press it from the down side so that is why we can stop it that is the basic concept in between the double grade devices instead of using uh, instead of controlling the uh, the control uh, uh, charges from one side, you can now uh, control it from the uh, both sides, from the top side and the bottom side. Like in this one, you can see this picture. There is in front gate is there, uh, one uh, back gate is all there, there and uh, one uh, SI SOI layer, or you can say you can simply thought, think that this is a silicon layer is there. Uh, so it's a similar kind of uh, network. Earlier, it is also possible in uh, MOSFET as well because uh, you can uh, thought in that way that we have a substrate. Uh, substrate is there, uh, the four tunnel. But now, uh, now what will happen? We are now going to reduce the substrate thickness that we can 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 relate it and in the, that way. So what are the advantages of of uh, double gate transistor? It's as a uh, better control of channel from the transistor from the top side as well as the bottom side and because of the ele better electrostatic control the uh, now the but uh, obviously the uh, it's a simple physics that uh, i have already told you that uh, base in from the basic theory of the transistor we need at least three terminal devices the two terminals the role of two terminals are, are defined like source response making the charge carrier who are responsible for collecting the charge carriers and the all other terminals like third terminal whether in case of bjt there is a base in MOSFET, there is an uh, so, uh, gate is there, substrate is there, whatever be the other uh, uh, terminal we can use. This is only for the controlling purpose. To analyze the controllability, because uh, transistor, the major important uh, factor of the transistor. 
necessary that it has a controllable part. Otherwise, we can use a diode as well. So, rest all other terminals apart from the two terminals, uh, we can use for the controlling purpose. It has an uh, hence the control now at more terminal. So, instead of that, in that case, we can call it as a front gate and back gate. So, uh, the, the, it's the, the because of that, the electrostatic can, uh, control will be combined in the earth uh, And again, the third point is that it's had a better ion by ion of characteristics. Why we are focusing towards the ion by ion of characteristics? Earlier uh, in MOSFET in 1970s, you have heard so many literature. They said that uh, this device has not that much driving capability. This device has that much driving capability. But what will happen, as I also told earlier, because of the substitute conduction? What will happen if whatever be the effort to increase the ion like uh, if uh, as i have earlier discussed that if you are reducing the source and drain uh, distance or the uh, the length if we are uh, now uh, the proximity in between source and drain will reduce so what will happen or uh, definitely your ion will increase but it will also increase your i of so the driving current is not a uh, only performance parameter now the performance parameter is changes to ion by i of because uh, ion is changes to the ion is improving in a magnitude way like uh, if uh, it is if it is a 1.3 milliampere then it will change to 1.4 1.5 but i of will change into the order by changing 1.3 to 1.5 milliampere current, or you can increasing this this current, the I of is shown it will changes from nanoampere to uh, 10 to the power minus seven or 100 nano uh, nanoampere. So that's why we are now uh, focusing towards the I on by I of. Thereafter, the improved subthreshold slope is also there. No discrete dopant fluctuation because we are using uh, lightly doped. Uh, channel in that case so there are so many advantages lower junction capacitance doping profile drive current will increase gate capacitance will increase gate capacitance uh, no doubt this is a gate uh, overall uh, gate capacitance permit area not overall gate capacitance so this is the basic principle behind that but the again issue is that this is the schematic way uh, uh, and the, the, this is uh, as you have already uh, seen that this is this the structure is not a planar one because uh, from each and every side there is a terminal. Like uh, from the top side, there's a top gate, bottom side, bottom gate, source side, uh, source, uh, source terminal is there, gate terminal is there. So, how you can fabricate it? This is the main issue, but you can do that. In 19, 1984, it is already defined and uh, already fabricated because of the technological issues. So, uh, what will happen? What actually will happen? The field lines for the single gate and the double gate. I already told you that uh, gate, the role of gate, source and drain is involving in transferring the charge carriers, and the role of the gate is to uh, control the device, control the charge. Happen. You have seen that. If I have a drain potential because of the uh, box layer or the SiO2 buried oxide layer, although it's an SOI architecture, you can see that the electric field reaches uh, from drain side to the source side. So, uh, the actually the whatever be the, the the role of MOSFET is the first you have to fabricate a channel, and that, that, that this is the responsibility of the gate, and then you apply the drain bias and uh, transfer all the charge carriers. But now what will happen? I am not going to apply any uh, gate. Uh, potential at the gate side and only applied potential at the train side but because of that because of this fringing electric field this fringing electric field and the channel uh, a weak inversion channel is formed and uh, that is why we uh, the charge area some of the charge carriers will will uh, transfer from source side to a drain side it is all because of this and we call it as a leakage current because the ideally the gate is uh, we have not applied any gate uh, bias. So, because of the, uh, that is why to stop this uh, fringing electric field, we uh, we made a second gate. Uh, that is a double gate. Now, 
<coughs> because this gate is of made of either made of polysilicon or metal and because of that the fringe electric field is now restricted so in the charge here from source to ring now the complete part is that it is why we call it as an electric better electrostatic control because control from only from the gate side whatever with the contribution from any other electric field we call it under the category of short chain effect and uh, depending upon the issue depending upon the uh, uh, differences we can categorize a double gate mosfet in three ways like symmetric double gate mosfet or symmetric double gate mosfet round plane is there but is also a, a part symmetric one is there you can say like say in that way that you have a two mosfet that is connected in parallel like uh, both the gates have same work function the is real and completely same so if you are uh, bifurcating in it is in two two parts so both parts are same that's why we call it as a symmetric uh, symmetric uh, double gate mosfet and it's an actually a three terminal device <coughs> while the second part is the uh, also it's it also act as a three terminal device but uh, in that case the gate one is the material is somehow different like uh, you can use aluminium is there and tungsten is tungsten nitride is for gate two or you can introduce any asymmetry with respect to the uh, any part like you can change the oxide thickness you can change the oxide material gate material you can change and put same potential up over there so you in that case the both the channels go so upper a top channel and the bottom channel will behave differently so in that case you can say this as an asymmetric one you can also use uh, you can also so use this symmetric one but with four terminal device like front gate back gate and source and drain so this is also can act as an four terminal devices so that is classification is there from the process point of view we can define this an asymmetric gate an asymmetric gate uh, double gate device classical can be four device or independent gate device you can define this as a direct translation from the single gate device dynamic vt in a back gate biasing device new and new circuit isolated devices also but the biggest challenge is that how you can define it because it's not a planar device and what what actually the meaning of a planar device you have a plane and all the terminals are uh, all the terminals you are connected from the one plane only but this is a three dimensional structure Uh, it's not possible to uh, frame a uh, this kind of structure that the top gate top gate is from top terminal is from this side and back terminal is from this side so uh, the the structure is like in a uh, this way the planar double gate device the type one is there vertical double gate device this way is there and the, the type three device in type one device you have seen that the top gate is fine source is fine drain is fine but the four terminal is under the uh, top gate or or you can say it is it, it is inside the substrate then how you can take it and in type 2 devices the same problem with the source or the drain the top gate is there top gate is open to all bottom gate is open to all drain is open to all but the source is there so the proposed the third one is that now you can define in that way like uh, as a source is there and type 3 top gate is there now all the gate you can take it from the one plane also so this this structure the third one structure we call it as an a sample of uh, fin fed device and what challenges the uh, double gate is facing that is identical identical uh, there is an uh, misalignment Point is uh, there is a misalignment in uh, uh, with respect to the front gate to the back gate, and uh, alignment that will again changes uh, the properties to the asymmetric. And there is uh, this is the main issue with face, facing challenges to the double gate devices. And that is why in 1989. and that is why the in 1989 uh, first uh, sy mosfet devices is actually a vertical based devices 
is formed that we call it as a double gate SOI devices and they call it they named it as a delta but that did, did, didn't get gain any attention at that time and thereafter after 10 years uh, later in uh, 1999 Chen Ming who was the uh, R&D director of TSMC and uh, basically from the uh, University of California Berkeley and uh, they they again coined this as an fin fed device instead of saying this as a delta the the vertical thin channel uh, why why we they call it as an fin devices because uh, if you closely look at this it's similar to that uh, there is a channel is there and uh, a fin is uh, revolving over there so it resembles like a fish fin that's why we call it as an fin fed devices it is i have already told that that it is again coined by the chain Ming who in 1998 and 99 and that's why uh, we call it uh, we, the because of the this fin fed device gained too much attention after uh, in uh, after 2010 that's why we call uh, the Chen Ming who is become uh, we are saying that uh, in most of the literature you find that they call everyone call it his as a uh, father of finfit the this finfit device is also uh, also get same advantages as the double gate uh, or you can say it's actually an alternate of double gate devices that have a self-aligned gates the only additional advantage with respect to double gate is that it has a self-aligned gate or rest all other uh, all other advantages are similar to uh, or same as that of the mosfet and because of that like uh, this is this is a fin and instead of this uh, instead of making this you can define the self line date so we can call it as a fin fed device so uh, now you can look it at this and uh, this has a uh, gate one is there gate two is there and because of this top sided we can call it as a fin fed devices so again, simple and self-aligned gate, better control of short channel effect, high current durability, and easy to fabricate. We call it as an easy to fabricate, but it is not easy to fabricate as compared to the planar MOSFET devices, not as planar double gate devices, not as compared to the MOS devices. And uh, later on, uh, there is uh, it gained too much attention thereafter. Therefore, the it uh, the FinFET devices are available in. Uh, so many, uh, so many uh, parts or uh, parts is there, and so many innovative architecture as proposed by the uh, researchers. Like uh, uh, FinFET can be treated as an uh, either double gate or triple gate. Some have already said this as an omega gate, pi gate, like that. Like in uh, first figure, you have seen that then there is an uh, fin is there, a bulk a yellow part. There is an fin is there, and uh, some. TI portion is there and then red one is the gate. This is actually a triple gate devices. Triple gate devices because the fin is uh, covered from three sided. First side, this is uh, that's why I am saying this. Side them. What, what will be the definition of height? Then the uh, the, from the height side, now the overall width is how we can define the width. The width is whatever be the portion under the gate. Sorry, under the gate. So. So under there is an uh, again H is there, then the thickness is of height twice of. plus uh, uh, try get actual bulk fin fit later on this the second part is device in between the top gate 
portion but you can also remove it you can then it becomes Your voice is not clear. Ankash sir. Ankash sir, your voice is not clear actually. Hello, Ankash. Hello. आवाज आ नहीं रही है अभी डिफरेंट वर्जन ऑफ इनफेट दट इज प्रपोज लाइक डबल गेट एस ओ आई दर्स्ट वन इज डबल गेट एस ओ आई The second one is the trigate SOI because why why we I am saying this as a double gate SOI because there is a hard mass in between the top gate and uh, the sub the silicon channel so this we call it as a double gate SOI because the third gate is little bit ineffective so that's why we call it as a double gate double gate while in case of the dielectric thickness in uh, the second part is is same all over the uh, three sides we can can call it as a trigate. similar to that a tri gate so is is also there a pi gate is also there there are so uh, this gate all around structure is also there you can also uh, you are not bound to define this as a rectangular gate also you can make it as a cylindrical one and uh, call it as a gate all around so all these variations are from the multi gate devices side the only difference why we called uh, all the very versions of pin pet because the gate is wrapped over the a part of fin that is why we call it as an fin pet so th these are the uh, basic uh, uh, issues with the fin pet devices uh, as i already told you that uh, there are uh, every new uh, every new uh, structure come up with a new uh, challenges so that that's why uh, in fin the device, this devices have as you seen that there is an corner side there is a corner is there and uh, the between the top and uh, left one and the top and the right one so because of that what will happen because the nearer the corner side have a impact of two gates that's why the threshold uh, you can say there is a pre premature inversion is there in near the corner that's why uh, in that case there is a the in overall fin fit if you are applying a central over there so in near the corner the inversion layer is formed earlier as compared to the sides sections so uh, there are two threshold is there that's why we call it as a corner effect in which the threshold voltage is there Th threshold variation is there so to remove that you can now Uh, uh, round up the corner also, uh, but uh, how you can do that? Because uh, you are dealing uh, with the less than 32 nanometer uh, architecture, 22 nanometer node. So is it is it uh, possible technologically? So that's why there is a lot of technological challenges as well. And also the biggest challenges uh, with the FinPET is that that it has a quasi three dimensional architecture. So that have a parasitic series resistance and capacitance also. so then now you have to make a fine balance in between the two goals that is the short chain effect because the uh, because of this uh, the uh, you have wrapped the uh, small portion of a silicon channel uh, from the three sides so 
it will become a So the biggest challenges that we face from the circuit point of view is the width quantization. Like width quantization, I have already told you. Fungus sir. Hello. Hello. Fungus sir, audio is not visible. Audio is not there. This is a Fungus sir. Hello. Hello. Sir, now it's the Take down the phone. Take a phone. But phone to share the second Arabaj. Take a tick.
Is it audible now? Yeah, fine. Uh, so these are the research, basic recent work. Uh, so uh, I have discussed that uh, you have to make a fine balance. You have to establish a fine balance in between the two goals. That is the short chain effect and the that is the short chain effect and the parasitic resistance. So the biggest challenge we associated with the FinFET devices is that uh, electric and uh, that is the width of the FinFET devices. Uh, like uh, you have heard uh, while designing any of the uh, uh, while designing any of the circuit and uh, digital side that uh, width is a very important parameter and you can you have to tune it to uh, make a fine balance in between the upper side in CMOS architecture you have to make a final balance in between P side and the N side the current conductivity of a P MOS and the current conductivity of N MOS and that's why you have to tune it like in a basic MOSFET everyone of you know heard that uh, it is suggested that the, uh, the width of the P MOS should be doubled so that the mobility effect the whole mobility effect will be reduced so and to uh, make a fine balance in between to make a fine balance in between p and n type okay so that is why the electric width of the fin fit is n fins so uh, now you how the issue is that in uh, this fin fit devices uh, there is a width quantization you cannot increase uh, width like like that if uh, w is a width of uh, one single fin then it should be uh, as in 2w 3w 4w you can uh, increase in an integer wise you cannot define it as an 2.3w 2.4w 2.5 etc so this is the biggest challenges that is the fin width quantization we call it a fin width quantization although several researchers have proposed but uh, again there is an issue with the process uh, complexity and uh, this is the basic survey that uh, as you all know that uh, the already several uh, industries have already focused towards the 10 nanometer, 7 nanometer, 5 nanometer fin fit device fabrication, like in your uh, Snapdragon processor, the, it is completely based on your uh, uh, fin fit devices. And uh, uh, I recently I heard that uh, Samsung is also approaching a 5 nanometer devices as well. So, the, similar to that, uh, the, uh, this problem faced by any new technology, the, this fin fit is also. Uh, uh, faces issues in, uh, in different issues like double patterning and three patterning uh, parasitic resistance and capacitance point quantization corner effect volume inverse and all these things so as of now some of all these things now uh, uh, say that the fin fit appeared to be the device of choice in sub 50 nanometer devices because of their reduced short chain effect and relative ease of integration however we need to work out on this the plastic capacitance the parasitics uh, and uh, challenges associated with that so with that uh, thank you and uh, sorry for this uh, disturbance in the connection of the audio Ramesh sir yeah so thanks for the uh, nice presentation uh, Actually, Dr. Pankaj is my colleague when I'm doing my PhD. So we sit together and we share some, some of our work. So there I have some knowledge on uh, thin fits. But uh, by listening uh, this uh, uh, program, I came to understand that uh, there are several type of thin fits are existing, especially asymmetric, uh, some, some gate is also connected to ground. So uh, what is the purpose of that gate is connected to ground? We have seen some, uh, we have shown some slide, right? Can you go to, go to that one? So there are three type of double gates existing, yes. symmetric, uh, symmetric. Yes, sir. Uh, can, you, can you go to that slide? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Actually, what happened in that uh, three type of structure is there. Actually, ethically, we are saying that uh, two structure is there, uh, symmetric one and the asymmetric one. In symmetric one, if we are, uh, uh, cross this part and or you can say that uh, you have a mosfet and uh, the similar mosfet uh, you can put it in parallel with that the other one so, so you can say this as a symmetric architecture in which the gate one and gate two top gate and bottom gate the material of both the gates are same oxide uh, material of both the oxide uh, dielectric is same and the, as well as the thickness is same while in case of a symmetric one 
you can change anything like uh, the material of uh, any gate oxide thickness oxide material but it's still uh, we are saying this as an that uh, uh, this is a, a tight gate architecture by while in case of the ground plane architecture it's kind it's a sorted of a independent gate architecture in which that the uh, it can be symmetric or asymmetric but we are now using the four different type of terminals is, uh, is there because uh, as you heard that in uh, basic mosfet devices we are saying that uh, this is a uh, four terminal devices because of the substrate this is the only way we have in uh, during the circuit uh, realization that using the substrate terminal or the body bias we can uh, change the threshold as per our requirement so okay, that okay, we right. cannot use uh, in triple gate so so if somebody wants to start their phd in finfet what suggestions you will give what want to there also want to start the work in phd in finfet yes sir still there are lots of challenges is there point uh, with quantization effect is uh, quite popular and so many researchers have already uh, worked on it but still the parasitic uh, the actual uh, modeling of uh, or you can say extraction of uh, resistance parasitic resistance and capacitance still pending and because of that we are not go going forward for the uh, fabrication of standard libraries so you can say making of standard libraries that is still missing in that uh, for devices so i would suggest if anyone work uh, on the extraction of parasitic resistance and capacitance that would be a good work or any you can say to find a standard for that the, any tool supports in online that can be yes sir um, and there are so many bsim model parameters are also there you can tune it as per your so we should use it actually bsim models right ankit Chandrasekhar sir, actually Pankaj is muted. No, now it is. Hello. Sir. Pankaj sir, are you in now? Pankaj sir, sir, sir. Pankaj sir, sir, sir. I don't know what happened there in the audio. Yeah. I'm using uh, first time this photo. And sorry for the issue. Uh, not not an issue. So maybe you are in some uh, remote okay. location. Okay. So, by the way, where are you currently? I'm in Rudki actually in my home town, but the network issue is there. But first time I'm using, I'm facing this audio issue because presenting is fine, video is fine. I don't know what happens here. Ah, so any suggestions, uh, the people who are currently starting started their work in Pinfits? Yes, sir. Uh, actually, you can also uh, 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 the work on the nano sheet transistors is there. It's an advanced version of Pinfit devices. It's an advanced version of Pinfit devices. In which the wet quantization effect is uh, is uh, take, taken care of, but still the standard the uh, uh, standard libraries and uh, uh, the percent the correct solution of percentics is not there. So if either you can work on modeling the percentic resistance and capacitance, uh, or you can work towards the variability or reliability side of the finfit device. So you are saying about some models, right? BC models. So how how you yes, can sir. download those those models? Uh, you can download directly from the UC Berkeley site. There are, but you have to tune it as per your specifications. Otherwise, you can uh, fabricate. Uh, you can model uh, in a TCAD. Uh, uh, you can frame this in a TCAD way and then extract uh, the data and uh, uh, upload it in the. Uh, you you can make in a very log A model for that and use it in it is in cadence. 
and then only you can use uh, you can uh, use it in circuit simulations so so any queries from the attendees and participants you can raise so you can un unmute your call and you can raise your comment if there is no comment then i would like to uh, thank dr pankaj pal so giving the, this time so hope this session was good and knowledgeable to all of you i extend my grateful thanks to all the participants and dr pankaj ji thank you so tomorrow we will start sir. at 11:30 same time ah no not an issue sir so anyway we have recorded the video uh, we can share it uh, in youtube so thank you okay you can, you can i'll also session. share my presentation with you uh, yeah thank you sir dr pankaj you can leave the session okay thank you sir